With deep ties to industry, the Johnson School legacy is one of corporate involvement and public support to enrich educational opportunity in North Texas. The school's history starts with Eugene McDermott, Eric Johnson, and Cecil Green, the founders of Texas Instruments. These visionary founders established UT Dallas. Initially, the new university only offered graduate programs. Cultural reasons delayed the establishment of an engineering school. The growing UT Dallas was located in an area that became known as the Telecom Corridor. It was in this moment of expansion and growth at the university and the surrounding area that it became clear. It was time to build a school of engineering and computer science. I started in August 1, 1973. The Johnson School, there was nothing, uh, literally. This was just an artifact, really. In the, if you looked out the window, there were the cows and horses of the extension campus of uh, a and So I came to UTD in 1985 as a MS student, and this is the time when Johnson School did not exist, and computer science department was under natural sciences. The university had always wanted to teach engineering, but the university itself had encountered a lot of opposition when it was created. People actually didn't want us to exist, and they were particularly adamant that we would not be able to have an engineering school. What they didn't realize is that the computer science department by itself already satisfied all these conditions. So computer science was moved from mathematics into the School of Engineering, and overnight, we satisfied all these horrendous conditions that were supposed to stop UTD from creating a School of Engineering. I was program head of computer science in 86, and one of the big developments that year was that uh, we recruited three new faculty from Northwestern University. That's why I went to school to get my PhD. So basically I recruited some of my professors and there were maybe we hired about five or six new double E faculty that just started. In 1988, it was kind of the Wild West. It was a bunch of assistant professors really running the show and a dean trying to just corral us a little bit. Back in those days, um, there was no such thing as an electronic library. Everything was just books. There were no freshmen or sophomores on campus at all. You didn't have uh, undergraduate students, so the campus was virtually empty during the day. Um, and we could you know, focus on research and do things that you would like to do when there are not more students around. And the students at night roll in, so the school literally started and you can everything buzzing with excitement around 5 o'clock or 5.30. So this was a very strange scenario, which I actually enjoyed because it gave the impression of being a research lab. Uh, way back in the early days, I would go to lunch with Polycarp Cush, Nobel laureate in physics. And we were all so friendly that napkins came out and diagrams. I mean, lunch was a learning experience. Over the past 30 years, the Johnson School has gone through many phases. And uh, uh, I'm very impressed with the, the longtime faculty who came in here, who had the courage to come in here when there was not much here uh, except the cotton field. You know, you cannot um, underestimate the contribution of the pioneers. Uh, they positioned us uh, well to, to um, launch us on the trajectory that we're on. Now, after 30 years of growth, the Johnson School has become one of the most rigorous and technologically advanced programs in the country. We have become an economic engine of growth and innovation for North Texas because of our focus on industry-relevant research and education. With an enrollment of nearly 7,000 students and over $51 million in research funding annually, the Johnson School has maintained the high quality of our programs while experiencing phenomenal growth. Impetus to getting great was the Project Emmett, which built the Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Laboratory and gave us significant extra money, kind of booster funding. Bob Helms came in as dean at that time, then David Daniel came as president, 
And then uh, we hired Mark Spong, and between David Daniel and Mark Spong, we began to add uh, degree programs in other fields, which was absolutely essential to becoming a real school of engineering. Uh, you know, the best students will follow the best faculty. And so if we have top research and teaching faculty, uh, I think that's what it's all about. And uh, I think we've done a tremendous job of bringing in uh, top-notch researchers, teachers who are dedicated to the students and uh, dedicated to their research. And I think that bodes well for the future. Please do not build steeples of excellence with the tenement of mediocrity. We follow that process. We carefully choose the areas that we want to be excellent in. We put all of our effort to build those programs. I mean, take a look at mechanical engineering, take a look at the biomedical engineering, uh, material science. All these programs came about in the past, you know, you know 10 or 15 years, and they have uh, gone to a very, very good place. All the elements that are needed for a very highly ranked department are already in place. Good emphasis on both funding as well as high quality publication has really made a big difference. So the Eric Jensen School, um, over the years has really become a force to be reckoned with. I, in my opinion, we've, um, we've gone from, I mean, essentially in 87, no departments, to having six fully functioning departments now. Everybody expected that it would grow and succeed, but uh, I think the reality has exceeded pretty much everybody's uh, expectations at that time. What we have now is a very large department, uh, very active. Computer science department has grown very rapidly um, in the last uh, few years, and so students can choose uh, pretty much anything they want to, to take, uh, whether it's graphics or software engineering or machine learning or animation, uh, virtual reality, uh, AI, networks. We have some incredible students. I ran the honors undergraduate program and I would pit my top 10 students any year against the top 10 students from any university in the country. These are excellent and they're being recruited by the very, very best schools and companies. Well, one of the things that I'm most proud of over the past nine years is the UT Design Program and the team that uh, Rod Wetterskog has put together, uh, both the staff and the faculty involved in the program and the students and the companies. It's a, it's a tremendous team effort and uh, as I say, it, it really has exceeded all of my expectations. The support given by Texas Instruments to UTD is absolutely phenomenal and without strings attached. One of our previous presidents, Dr. Franklin Jennifer, said, when you drive around the campus, if you can't see two cranes working, in other words, a lot of building going on, then that campus is dying. Well, I th don't think MIT is dying, but we are growing, and there's always a new building. The Johnson School was built on the vision of Eric Johnson, Eugene McDermott, and Cecil H. Green, the founders of Texas Instruments. In the last three decades, we have become home to some of the world's best researchers and students, and we're not slowing down. Our future promises to be as bright as our past. The Johnson School aims for another 30 years of excellence and to become a top school both nationally and beyond. In the next 30 years, I believe the Johnson School of Engineering and Computer Science can really be a nexus of innovation and uh, technology development for North Texas, Texas, and quite honestly, the, the United States. The DFW area is a magnet for bringing in amazing companies. I remain very optimistic about the future of the Johnson School. Given our rapid progress and, and where we are today, I, I think that uh, uh, the best is yet to come in many ways. It's really all about uh, the team effort, and I want to congratulate everybody and thank everybody for the support. As long as we continue to have support from the community, from the upper administration, uh, I think that uh, over the next 30 years, we can, we can indeed become the MIT of the Southwest.